Hey there, Ryan Kingsline here of ZBrush Workshops. Got another tip for you on how to deal with materials. And this time I wanna break down what a basic material has and talk a little bit more about not the new stuff, but the old school stuff. Because the old school's old school, it always comes around, it's like the 80s, right? And we need to understand this stuff because it's, it is still powerful, it is still important even with the awesomeness of matte cap materials. So, what do we got over here? We have a basic material, it's even called basic material. And I wanna dissect what we have here along the side. So that's the material palette that I have open. And what I wanna bring your attention to are parts of this. Because it's all lumped together, so it's hard to know, you know, what's what, why is it there, things like that. And so anytime I'm working with this, I'm working in specific areas, and I'm avoiding other areas. So I want to make sure you understand what are those areas I work in. First thing, basic attributes are pretty much right here. From ambient down to metallicity. I am going to completely ignore transparency and I'm going to completely ignore reflectivity. Those things are largely going to be ignored here, but diffuse is important, most importantly, the diffuse curve. Specular is important, most importantly, the specular curve. Then you get this section of noise, noise radius, which kind of gels with color bump. I'm going to ignore gel shading and environment reflection. I'm gonna pick it up again when I get to colorize diffuse, colorize specularity. I'm gonna pick it up again when I get to anisotropic diffuse and specularity. But I'm going to ignore pretty much the rest of it. Very bottom here you have vivid, you have fong blend specularity, and you've got some extra little elements there. Uh, color, cavity, uh, modifiers basically. We're not going to cover cavity because you know if we wanted to use cavity we'd use matte cap in my opinion. But we do cover this. We do cover specularity ambient. So I'm way down here in the corner, uh, bottom of the screen. What is important is to first get the ambient, the diffuse, and the main effect of light over your model right. How do you do it? Diffuse. I'm going to set ambient to zero. I'm not going to bother adjusting the amount of diffuse, but I do want to get in and adjust that curve. This is the quality of the light over the surface. What is your material property like? Is it such that, you know, the thing gets flooded with light and you really only see the shadow at the far edge as the form turns away? You know? How's this working? Or is it a little bit softer or different where it's a little bit more like metal? It's darker all over and you only see light where the specular is or where the, most of the, the light is hitting. This curve is important. You can reverse that. That suddenly looks like metal, right? And all I did was put a curve in. A lot of fun stuff you can do with that. You can actually fake three-point lighting with this curve. Let's just reset it. Pull this up. And pull that down a touch. And I don't know about you, but I've got a kind of classic lighting setup. I need to work on it. There are some issues. But I have the uh, main light set up for the main point. This is of course taking its information from the light palette, which we'll look at. I have my uh, shadow, my core shadow. Okay, and I have my reflected light. I've got all these elements that I need for an essential three-point lighting setup. And all I had to do was this curve, adjust this curve. If I was in Maya, what I would be doing is attaching a ramp in there with intensity, and then I've got to attach the, or I've got to drive the ramp by a sampler info node. You know, there's a whole bunch of stuff you got to do to make that happen. It's built in and simple, and it's been largely ignored for, you know, years in this case. 
So make sure you get in. Start to experiment and play. Do I want that core shadow to be that dark? Maybe not. Let's lighten that up. Throw the intensity higher. Throw some specularity in there. Add some more points. Make the light a little harder, a little softer. It's all up to you. That curve can do a lot to define the look and the feel of it. Same thing goes for the specular. So you can come in and take this focal shift, drag this way all the way to 90, and suddenly that highlight is very small and very localized in specific areas. Very localized. Watch as we drag this back. Let's pull that curve out. See how it expands? Drag it the other way and you have a different situation. So you want to set these first. You'd also probably want to set your lights because as I said earlier they are already you know th the standard material is using that light. So right now I've got one light. Am I gonna light from below? Am I gonna light from the side? Am I gonna light from the top, down, all of that stuff? You don't get to really see the shadow a cast shadow until you render this. Whatever you do when you render it, make sure you turn off things that aren't needed. Ambient occlusion, I'm going to check out my shadow settings. I got them quite high and I'm going to set BPR uh, S picks to zero, I should say. That's rendering a lot faster. I have a color in the shadow. That's not something you're necessarily going to have. So let's drag that all the way back. But now I'm getting my cast shadow. And by cast shadow, I mean this thing you can see right here. All of this. So a cast shadow is now part of it. This doesn't look good, doesn't look pretty, but the elements are what I'm placing. So let's start to make this look pretty. Let's start to make this look good and at least semi-interesting. Let's add another light. Double click it. Let's pull it all the way to the back so that it's actually a real rim light. Let's go into our diffuse curve Let's reset that because now we'll get a real rim light with some nice effects. I'm going to take my diffuse curve a little high. I'm going to lower that specularity. And I'm going to actually make the specularity a little tighter. I'm going to take the ambient out of these lights so I don't have these other elements infecting it. And I'm going to take my intensity down a little bit. And let's click the next light and double click it. And uh, let's take a look at the type of light that third light is set up. This is another really neat part about the material setup. It's already built with this three point lighting setup. So here's your main light. This is supposed to be a fill light, and this is supposed to be your rim light. And the rim light has radial on. So that's pretty cool. That's all set up and built in there for you. Uh, and, you know, let's just do a best preview render and see how we're doing. You know, I'm not happy, but I'm hitting my markers and I'm progressing. Taking longer to render now because I got more lights in. And so the more lights, the more maps it's calculating based on the best preview render settings, and you're in great shape. So looking better, I mean, I'm kind of liking what I've got here. I'm liking this. I'm keeping this all in grayscale right now because I'm studying value. And uh, that 
simplifies the uh, teaching process, it also simplifies my development process here because I'm not happy with that core shadow. I'm, it's way too small. So I'm going to come into my rim line and uh, I got to figure out how to adjust that because it's just too strong. It's not going to adjust. Let's move it here, see if that changes. No, that might work. Take a look at the intensity curve. Everything's got a curve, which is pretty awesome. So I can lower that a little bit. But the problem isn't my fill light. The problem is actually the main light. It's got a strong fall off right there at the edge. So I can adjust that, and it's going to start to soften. But I'm going to have to compensate and increase my intensity. Okay, and then that's going to blow out some of the form, so I'm going to have to decrease my diffuse. You get a sense of the complexity, but I, I like that core, I like this shadow a little better. This is softer here. It's a little nicer. And I would just continue developing that if I really wanted to, but I'm going to come in and just increase my light a little bit. And with the rim light, Let's really increase that. And in order to see this in effect, I'm going to just double click the other lights, turn them off. And I want to take this light, really push that. See if I can't get that adjusted. So I'm taking it all the way, and I'm going to lower my intensity so it doesn't affect as much as it was yeah let's go about there just a little bit of a rim effect double click turn the rest of these guys on and still too much okay best preview render it Okay, we're getting there. It's too blown out though. So there's a discrepancy between the preview and the best preview render. And that's something you gotta be aware of. Another moving part to be concerned with. But here, we're starting to get something you know I can work with. Now I've gotta adjust my rim light. That was too intense. It looked okay in preview, but it didn't look okay when I actually rendered the thing. All right, that looks better. And that's just a, you know, the basic lighting setup that I've got. I'll save the project and then move on. And you know, we started talking about lights and materials. Well, we started talking about materials. We moved over to lights and we never got to all the rest of this stuff. So we're gonna have to save that for another tip and trick and um, we'll take it from there.